Hello, in this Ionic programming video, we're going to show you the CSS component tabs. Tabs, chances are if you've used an application or if you've created an application or if, if you're here watching this video, you know where a tab like system is. If you use Facebook, Twitter, something along those lines, it's a great way of displaying information that usually will be on a separate page. Technically, it still is, but the actual way to access those different pages are always on the screen. You can make the disappear, but I think the whole point, the actual benefits of it, of a tab like system, is that the buttons are always there. Most of the time they're at the bottom, but they can be on the top as well. There's no reason why they can't. Many applications do have them on the top. So let's get started. First of all, to create a tab, let's just create a div. It's really simple to do. Add a class of tabs. And in here, we need a anchor tag, which is gonna have a class of tab dash item. And this is, well, the item itself. I think you guessed that already. I'm gonna call this home. And to add more items, you simply just copy and paste this. So let's add this. And now I'm just gonna change this to settings, change this to count save it obviously these don't do anything but this is a sort of these are the sort of tabs you would have in an application so now let's build our project it's taking a little longer than usual a lot longer actually Okay, Ooh. it's a bit laggy. Let's have a look at what Activity Monitor is saying. Activity Monitor is looking a okay. It's weird why it's Xcode again. God damn Xcode. For some reason, oh, I loaded up Xcode earlier on as well, and it was just using so many resources. Sometimes you always get an application that just wants to do its own thing. I'll tell you a little story while I'm just loading Xcode up again. I was using GitHub a few months ago, and I, I'm not joking, GitHub tried to use over 30 gig of RAM. It was actually going into reserved RAM from, from my hard disk. And I was like, why would you want to use so much? It wasn't even doing anything. Either way, <laughs> that was really annoying. So let's just run this. Still seems a bit laggy. Let's see what Activity Monitor is saying again. Seems okay. I think we should be able to make do. So the application is loading up. So here we go. Here are the tab systems. If I click on it, nothing happens apart from I can hover over it, click, but it doesn't actually change anything because that's required JavaScript and that's going to be in a separate video. This is just showing the CSS component. So that's text. A lot of time you've seen tab items that have icons in there to add an icon. Really simple. So let's just add an icon here. So what we're going to do is do I class. If you want more information about CSS component, I mean Ionic icons, feel free to just do a quick Google of Ionic icons and you'll get a page that shows you all the different classes that you can use and what they look like. So let's just end that. And what you want to do is do, you want to position the tabs. So tabs dash icon dash top. So let's just save this. I'm actually going to have like a hybrid system. So I'm going to have two that actually have an icon and the third one won't have an icon at all. So I'm going to put this as a gears, gear dash a, save, build our project. Just 
still building. So now let's run this. Okay, so here we go. We have an icon, another icon. You might be thinking, whoa, though we've got the text, why is that at the top? And the reason is because of this class right here, tabs-icon-top. So it anchors everything to the top. If you don't want text in there, you, you simply remove the text. And one thing you need to do is change top or whatever positioning you got to only. So that makes the positioning all good. What you can also do is do dash left. So what this does, actually, I won't even tell you what it does. I'm just going to build it and show you. That's always the best way to learn. So visual learning. So you can actually see the result of it. Okay, so now that has built, let's run the application in simulator. After I've done this video, I'm definitely going to have to have a look at why it's so slow. I'm hoping that a simple restart will fix it. It fixes most problems, but it's weird. I haven't been doing that much on it today. Computer hasn't been on that long, but performance seems enough for this video so that should be a okay so if you put as you can see tab dash a icon dash left it anchors the icon to the left and well because there's no icon here this is just well anchored and that's it really what you can also do is change the color of well your tab because if you have a look at the tab at the moment it's just got this gray boring default color so if you want to change the color you simply use one of these colors that we've got right here basically the same color classes or color naming convention that we've had in all for the of all the other css components you just put tabs dash let me put positive save that rebuild the project Okay, now let's just run it and you'll see our new or our tab has a different color now. So it's just a great way of changing the color system. Okay, here we go. Let's load up the simulator. There we go, we have a different color now because we used positive. You might be thinking, oh, how do I change the color of the actual items themselves? Maybe you want to change them. I'm going to change them to dark. To do that, you put tabs dash color. So tabs dash color changes the actual, well, the actual color of the items inside. So I'm going to put dash dark, which is this one right here. Obviously, you probably won't want like a dark color and another dark color or a light color, another light color, because you won't be able to see it very well. Another thing I'm going to show you before I compile it, because it's taking a little while to compile. If I do tab dash strict, this looks quite cool as well. So let me show you 
what this is like and you need to set one of these to active so let me set this one to active and now let's build a project I don't know if you can hear my stomach's rumbling. I just had some pizza, but it's still, it's still like, it wants more food. I think I might have to obey my stomach in after I've done this video. Okay, so it's almost built our project. So now let's run it in the simulator. So you've learned to quite a lot in this video about tabs, how to position them, how to add colors, how to have icons, how to not have icons and just text or just have icons and no text. Best way to learn is just to advance on what you've done by just combining the different elements that you've learned. I actually see the results. Sometimes it won't look so good. Sometimes it'll look fantastic. And that, let's just say that is definitely not what we wanted. So let's go back and see what about this it didn't like. So tab dash straight I'm going to get rid of this the positioning that shouldn't be an issue whatsoever tab dash positive mm, I think this needs to be background tabs dash background dash positive tabs dash color dash dark with inside of this we have tabs so I'm, I'm just trying to, ah, uh, I think I know what I've done within, this actually needs to be its own container above what we already had. So within this, we actually need a div, Let's copy and paste the ending tag, put it after here, now go back, go back. Now let's sort this bad boy out. Ah, it's close enough in terms of indentation. So class, this needs to have a class of tabs. Save that. Rebuild our project. But yeah, the first thing I'm going to do once I've done this video and actually once I've edited it and got it ready to upload is restart it, just try and do some test videos just to make sure it's it's all good now because this is really, uh, I'm hoping it'll be okay because I'm, I'm going to watch the video afterwards just to make sure it's okay because if it isn't, I will re-record it. But I think it's smooth enough for this video, but I will rectify this problem. If you're watching this video, very sorry, but I will, I will. Chances are, we'll have already rectified it by the time you watch this video. So, this is about a load. Come on, load in our amazing simulator. So, there we go. And as it's, it's sort of hard to see, I'm going to zoom in a second. There is a line on the top, and that's what the stripped part is. It, it's another way of indicating which one is active because the other two are gray, this is dark, and that, that dark color and that color there is dependent on the class that we use here, tab dash color dash dark. So if I were to, let's say, click on this one, as you can see, it's selecting it, but then it deselects it when I let go. And like I said, because we haven't added any JavaScript, and that's going to be in a separate video because at the moment we're just covering CSS components. You'll learn all about having individual pages which have its own content for each individual tab. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description. There'll be another link alongside that one to the source code of this video, the source code of every other video in this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment, and as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.